Hi, this is your host, Apil Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TF4 Let's Talk. We are here at KubeCon, and today we have with us Ramiro Beriaza, CEO and co-founder at Octeto. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for inviting me. Excited to be here. And, you know, since you are a co-founder of the company, so I also want to understand the story of the company, why you created the company, what problem you're trying to solve. I've been working in, in software for about 15 years, everything from large companies like Microsoft all the way to early stage companies. And the problem we're solving around making it easier for teams to develop microservice-based applications is something that I've seen everywhere I worked. Software teams struggle. They're not efficient. There's a lot of friction with cloud services, with Kubernetes. So because it was a problem that I faced personally, when we decided to start a company, it was very clear to us that this is something that we wanted to solve. And here we are, four years later, working in some great companies around the world in, in helping them deliver software faster and have less friction in their entire software process. If you look at a lot of these cloud technologies, they are relatively new, right? Kubernetes itself, 2014, you know, and then, but uh, we have been talking about digital transformation for a very long time, where companies are like trying to build from the old IT to the cloud. So there was already a challenge with modernization there, right? So first of all, talk a bit about uh, when you look at the wider industry, how many companies they is already have a cloud native, you know, environment, or there is still a big company where you feel that, hey, you know what, they're still in very early phase of their journey. They're still struggling to move to the cloud, their applications. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting ecosystem. And, and if you walk the hall here at KubeCon, you'll notice how there's everything from very traditional Fortune 100s all the way to early stage. I think overall we're early in the cloud native transformation. I think that, you know, you can see all these early companies like us, no legacy, very nimble, they can move to Kubernetes very easily. But the reality is that most of the software in the world is not new, right? We have legacy, we have old systems, so companies are slowly transforming, they're adapting new technologies, and what we see with our customers is every company in the world is thinking about Kubernetes, is thinking about microservices, and they have a strategy. For some companies, like large global banks, this might be a five, 10-year uh, process. For others, maybe two or three, but it is impressive how quickly everybody aligned on Kubernetes, which I think is a testament to the fact that cloud native applications are solving real problems for everybody. Right, and once again, you're absolutely right about, you know, the company. we are seeing Ford and banks, which have been around for two or three hundred years, right? A lot of banks who are moving, and then, of course, new companies. Um, there are a couple of things that have happened, especially when AWS or you know, cloud didn't become. We also start talking about the role of you know developers, you know developer DevOps. Where now we talk about SREs or platform engineering. So can you also talk a bit about that from the traditional IT to the cloud native world, the way we write, deploy, manage, and you know discard application that has also drastically changed which also means the, the kind of work that you used to do, a developer used to do, has also changed. Now you're responsible for a lot of things. But then, at the same time, the things are moving at so fast, new technology coming so fast, there is still gap. They're not in the workforce. So, so role is also changing, responsibility is changing, and then they are not enough people. So this is a massive challenge for companies. So talk a bit about how you are seeing this problem from you know, outside or inside. No, but this is a great question because this is one of the reasons why we started Octeto. I think as, as application modernization has moved forward, we went from monoliths and VMs, all, or like even before that, monoliths, mainframes, then VMs, then containers and Kubernetes. So as, as you said, this is creating the need for more specialized work because applications are more complex. They get bigger, they do more things, technology is more immersed in our lives than ever. But it creates this, all these new roles, and it creates, you know, we're, we, we moved away from the one engineer that knows everything, like everything from networking infrastructure, security, code, to now these highly specialized teams where you have developers very focused on front end, on back end, SREs, operations, etc. And that's why like, we will look at one of our objectives is that, is provide companies with the tools needed so that teams are efficient, because even though it's very obvious that you need the separation of, of concerns, 
not every company is there yet. A lot of companies still believe that they, they need to have everybody do everything. And modern tools like Octero help you kind of transition towards a world of abstractions, highly specialized teams, a platform that solves a lot of problems for everybody, and things like that. And when you're talking about you know, different teams, like uh, with the cloud, we also are talking about breaking the old silos, networking guys, security guys, you know, all those guys. But with, once again, silos can be built, you know, but uh, today, as you said, it's specialized teams. So we are creating new soft silos, folks that they know. So it's like fashion, we keep going back into the loop and the cycle. So, so let's talk about, you know, you did touch on like practical, realistic. I mean, we love to talk about hey, adoption of DevOps is growing, platform engineering, but what we are seeing in reality. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, part of what we're seeing in reality is there are silos. There's definitely something that, as an industry, we've always fought against, and new technologies help break down those silos. I think Kubernetes did a good job at making infrastructure operations more, more easier for everybody. I think these sub silos, are necessary to a certain level. And I think that modern tools are helping create these transversal teams. Like Octero, our product, while we build it for developers, what we see in the field is that a lot of our customers are also on the SRE operations because they like the fact that with Kubernetes and with Octero, you can create this platform where developers only focus on the high level, developer experience, write code, but if they need to, they can kind of like poke inside the platform and have access to all of Kubernetes. And that is something that we're seeing that more and more in the field where you have these specialized Kubernetes engineers who are working really hard to enable everybody else. And that's where like internal platforms, platform engineering, developer experience comes together to enable everybody else to take advantage of these beautiful, powerful systems without being blocked so I like that soft side, as you mentioned, where I, don't, I like the fact that I don't have to be an expert on everything, that our, our team works together to kind of bring the expertise, but that the modern tools do allow me to do things self-service without me having to wait for somebody else to come and unblock me. I think that is something that as an industry we're doing very well, and that is driving a lot of like major changes, especially in large organizations, because a company of 20 people has some efficiencies, but if you're like, 10,000 people and you make everything 10% faster, you're talking about huge gains. And that's where like really the industry, I think is trending in the right direction in this 300 year old banks that you were talking about. That's where like a lot of things are going on like really interestingly. And I actually fully agree with you when you talk about, but there are certain like security, for example. Security is not that everybody can, you know, just learn and know. Second thing is that there are certain technologies or areas that we are interested and passionate about. So we will just focus on that. So those you can call a specialized team or silos, they will remain no matter how much we want to break them. You know, that, that's where the whole specialist come into picture. That actually makes you more secure. Hey, these folks are trained in that job. They know how to secure my environment. Let them do the job versus, you know, trying to do everything. But the fact is that we are trying to just make things easier for the team so that they don't get overwhelmed with this complexity. Right. So, 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 how do you look at the complexity of Kubernetes, cloud native world? And then we will. I would love to talk a bit about your offering, but let's look at the complexity problem. How much? How serious is it? Yeah, no, that's a great question, and that is something that I hear a lot from friends, colleague, customers. I think there is a perception that Kubernetes is complex, and it is. But it's only complex if you think of Kubernetes as like you have to understand everything, and that's kind of touching that point you were mentioning. It's kind of like with security, where Security is a very complex topic, but we have experts, and not everybody needs to be an expert in security. I think we're finally understanding that in the cloud native world, that not everybody needs to be an expert on Kubernetes. Of course, everybody who's here, myself included, yes, we are the experts, we are the SMEs, we're going to be operating clusters, running infra, designing systems that take advantage of this, but not everybody. And if we do our job well, we are going to hide that complexity. I put the example, I always put the example of like a car, where like we all drive cars. That doesn't mean we have to understand how the engine works or how the chemistry of a battery works to give us power. I think Kubernetes is still fairly young. Like for all of us involved here, it feels like it's been forever, but in the greater scheme of things, as you mentioned, 2014, 2015, it's only been like five, six years. Um, we still have a long road ahead, and, and the fact that more and more people are now worried about 
How do we make it less complex? How do we make this more uh, approachable for new companies, for younger developers, for teams new to this world of cloud native? I think it's a sign of a healthy ecosystem that is moving away from a niche into like the mainstream. Because Kubernetes, I think, is, is poised to be the underlying layer of all cloud development for the next 10 years. Talk a bit about how you folks are approaching this complexity problem. You can talk about either your projects, your tools, to make it easier for folks to consume Kubernetes without compromising on the flexibility that it offers. Yeah, that, that is, I, I worry about this problem every day. This is the core of our company and the reason why we all decided to start Octero. In our case, we're tackling the complexity from the point of view of developers. You know, developers, as we move to this world of cloud native, microservices, and Kubernetes, applications became more complex because now they have more pieces. It's a good thing. This means our applications are more scalable, they're more resilient, but you do need to manage more things. You have to think of like multiple databases, multiple services. So in Octero, our, our goal was to help manage this complexity. I like to use that term because it's not about reducing the, the complexity, it's about helping our customers manage that complexity by giving a platform where they can deploy a copy of their applications per developer. This is what we call a cloud development environment, where if they don't care about Kubernetes because they're not working at that level, they can click one button or run one command, deploy all this infrastructure in Kubernetes, but they don't see it. All they see is your application is ready, here's the address. And then when they want to develop, they can use our tooling to simply put their code in the cloud. I find that very powerful because that means that, and we see through our customers, right? In a team of three, 400 people, you don't need to train 400 people on Kubernetes. You can train five, 10, and you have a core team of experts. And this team plus Octero are gonna enable the other four, 390 engineers to do their job because, and that's also something that's happening more and more. People now understand that Kubernetes is the tool. What matters is what you built on top of it. So the time you spend working at the Kubernetes layer is not creating value for your company. What creates value for a bank is when they're building software to help the mobile application of their customers. So tools like Octero and others, I think we're very focused on, on helping manage this abstraction, helping multiply the effort of the experts with the end goal of helping all these businesses be better at what they do. It's all about how can you ship value faster, how can you iterate sooner, and how can you do it with the less friction possible so your developers are happy, inspired, confident, because you know happy teams are great teams and great teams build fantastic stuff. I'm happy that you brought the point up because I also uh, want to ask a bit about the, the importance of developer experience. When we do talk a bit about you know that you know DevOps, you know, platform engineering, are we blurring the lines between uh, developers and ops teams and security, or we are like moving a lot of things in developers' pipeline? Because if we do do that, the focus on, you know, as you said, you know, the bank is not known for how well their Kubernetes cluster is running, but what services they're offering. When I'm traveling, am I able to withdraw money? Am I able to send money back? So, or new featured functionality. That, so that is where, you know, that's their real business. So does that discourage, you know, this complexity, overwhelming, discourage that, you know, the first hand, you know, where you're actually focused on innovation because you are dedicated to so much. So does that make sense? That question makes sense? So, so talk a bit about uh, how that's affected and once again, why is it important to make it simple for them so companies can be innovative? They, I mean, their job is not to run a successful Kubernetes cluster. As you said, it's just a tool. Mm -hmm. No, you're completely, you're completely, um... Correct on that, and, and it sounds simple, but I think as, as an industry, it has taken us a few years to kind of reach that conclusion. Like, developer experience is something that has always existed. Right? There was always an experience that developers had with writing software, but for many years, it wasn't something that we as an industry pay attention to, had budget for. Now it's becoming a bigger thing. I think something that it's different, and, and we had this, um, conference with one of our customers about two months ago, and I really liked the way they put it, which was, they talked about platform as, platform has, the customers of platform team are the company's cluster, uh, customers. The customers of the developer experience team are 
the company's developers. And I like to see it that way. Like developer experience is about making it easier for the developers to build software. Operations and platform are the ones in charge on keeping sure that our systems are running so our customers can be effective at what they do. So I like that split. I think as an industry, we need to focus more on developer experience. That's an area that I really like. I'm passionate about it. That's why we started a company doing this. Um, but I think it's very important for more companies to have this as a top of mind concern because the more effective your engineers are, the better your business is going to run and the more you're going to be able to innovate and create wonderful experiences for your customers. And, and for me, that is something that is fundamental. We have been talking about, you know, Octetola. Can you talk a bit about what, you know, what are your offerings, you know, if you can talk you know, just about product services, whatever, you know, how you make life easier for developers? Right. Yeah, so Octeto is a platform that we provide for our customers. It's both self-hosted, they can run on their own infrastructure, or we have a cloud service as well. It enables teams of all sizes to deploy and manage cloud dev environments. Very high level, it allows developers to move everything they run on their local machine, databases, services, dashboards, into Kubernetes in a way that it still feels like they're running locally. We sometimes describe this as expanding your local host experience into the cloud. And we do it in a way that you know, self-service, abstraction of Kubernetes are very important. And, and really, the, the whole premise behind Octero is that we want teams to be able to use Kubernetes as part of their dev cycle, rather than just for operations, going back to this abstraction and, and benefits. Because as we build applications for Kubernetes, the sooner that we developers interface with Kubernetes, the better it is for everybody. Because some you know, old school companies only have Kubernetes in production, but locally they use something else, which means that they are facing a lot of production only issues because of this friction between local code and Kubernetes. And that is what we solve for our customers. We have customers everywhere from small companies to public, to public companies that use Octero as a way to speed up their development cycles. And their feedback so far has been fantastic. Companies talk about reducing their production issues by 50%, speeding up their feature delivery by 15, 20%. It's, it's really amazing to see what, how fast companies can deliver software once they have the right tools in place. You may or may not be able to name companies, but if you can share, either share the companies or some use cases where you're like, hey, these are the exciting use cases where we are seeing Octeto is being used. Yeah, there, there are some companies who were uh, gracious enough to let us name them. Um, some of our bigger customers are Monday.com, Launch Darkly, Replicated, a few of them are here. And the main use case for them is the ability to spin up an entire copy of their application realistically per developer, just to make development easy. Like Monday.com is a good example. We have a, they wrote a blog post on this, on their engineering site, which was really cool on how with Octero, you know, developer joins the company, they click one button in their interface, in a couple of minutes they have an entire copy of Monday.com just for themselves, which means that they can take the code, put it in that environment, and try whatever they want without having any fear of breaking production, affecting somebody else, and replicate it kind of the same way. A lot of our customers do that. Uh, an emerging use case we're seeing also is with companies who are building mobile applications. We have a, a big customer, Homa Games, in Europe, and they're building like a, a mobile a APIs for mobile uh, games and, and the same story. They can now give their developers an entire copy of, of production, which then they can use to test their mobile applications, to do end-to-end -end testing, to build new features and share them with their customers before they hit production. So overall, it's, it's about making the developers faster, help them abstract away Kubernetes, and build higher quality software. Ramiro, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, not only talk about the company that you created, but also the bigger problem that is there. We don't talk about that much because we are, we feel that we have moved to the next phase of cloud universe, but this problem is still there that you folks are trying to solve. So thanks for sharing those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was, it was great talking to you and looking forward to the next one.